hello. Welcome to Day One Patch Podcast, episode 277. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Uh, we got Matt Lawrence here. Yeah. And uh, top stories for this week include Cyberpunk 2077 launching on NVIDIA's cloud gaming service, GeForce Now, on launch day. Which I've seen in use in the real world for the first time ever the last two weekends ago. I, I played at your house. You but you, you were just testing. I yeah. mean, like this person was like playing on they a were MacBook. Seriously they were like playing, actually yeah. using it. Yeah, yeah okay. like literally using it. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands film will be helmed by famed horror director uh, Eli Roth. Xbox Series X includes bold ideas for competing in next gen. Oh. PlayStation. Uh, we have a few cancellations here. PlayStation cancels PAX East uh, attendance due to coronavirus. And Facebook and PlayStation have both canceled their GDC appearances, citing coronavirus. So it's pretty scary. Definitely eh? disrupting the world. But what's new, Matt? Uh, so I beat, finally beat, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Origins. So one of the things I don't know if you knew knew this, but like I've played a bunch of the ACs. But one of the things I always did, I believe, with every AC, maybe other than the first and second was I would play it for a long time, take a long break. Before the other one came out, I'd boot, I'd boot it up and beat it. But it was usually like probably just about a two two or three month break. And so I remember the story and such. Yeah. This one I didn't do that, and that's why I was getting that burnout, because mm-hmm. I just didn't do that. Uh, but I beat it now, beat the story, got that the end achievement. Um, big going, damn world. Going for that plat? I'm not doing the platinum. Um... Definitely not doing the platinum. I should probably go back and do the plat for um, Odyssey. Hilariously, Marty and I looked at that the other night, and we were surprised that you did not have it. Are there a few key ones that I like or could have easily done? And I don't actually know. We were just surprised that you didn't have the platinum. Because of how, my, how long I played it. Yeah. Uh, I can't recall what some of the ones were, but I think they were just like, I couldn't be bothered to do them. They were just too much work that I wasn't caring to put into that game. That's the way I feel with Origins. It would be a lot of running around, right. grinding on missions that I don't care about. Because the world is so big, it takes forever to get around. And it's just like, it's it's more work just running around than, than I care to do. I would say that the world is impressive, though. The, the yes. worlds that they build now are very impressive. That's what I love They're about Odyssey, big. too. Like, I love the, the vastness of the world. I'm just saying, for the, the goal of getting achievements, it's, it's more laborious than usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's that, and then there's... So in in Origins, I don't even know how to describe this. In Origins, there's this weird, almost B story where you play as Aya or whatever. And for some reason, her parts are never, or at least none of the parts that I remember. Was that his wife? That's his wife. For some reason, none of her parts of the game are free roam, which I always felt was, which I thought was weird. Mm-hmm. And they're very forced, too. So, I don't know if you remember this, but at the end of that game, I would say my biggest complaint about that game is the ending, actually. The reason why I think that there's a problem with the ending is that there's clearly three endings to that game. Two to three endings of that game, I'd say. Three. Yeah, there's definitely three endings. I'm, I'm, now, I'm going to ruin the game right now as a spoiler. The first ending, right, comes when you talk to her. She's on the, the shore, and she's like, we're going to go and end this. And you start a big battle. Alexandria is all in chaos. There's a big fight between, like, you're trying to, like, unseat Ptolemy and, like, there's a bunch of crap going on. I don't, I don't lot, know the story yeah. that well, yeah. but, like, there's a bunch of crap going on. The Romans are fighting. There's a, it, it's a whole thing. And Cleopatra goes and marries off to uh, Caesar. Before you do that mission, she says, like, are you, like, you know, make sure you have all your stuff done before you come do this. And there's actually like a prompt that says like yes I want to do this or no so you would figure this is the end of the end of the game mm-hmm. that mission has several parts like it is a freaking long mission you do all of it and then it just ends in some alleyway where it's like oh Cleopatra betrayed us and she's like only with Rome now yeah then you do another ending so like that should have already been an ending so now this is like a little bit forced where it's like oh we were actually betrayed then there's another ending where you like I can't even remember what the hell happens but it's like I don't even remember the mission. It, it's that it's that forgettable, but you do this mission, and then you you get to the point where you break up with Aya like officially on a beach, mm-hmm. and then that, and then they're like talking about the creed where they're like 
this is our creed. And like this. So you're like, oh, this is the origins of the creed, right? Literally, literally, <laughs> though. So you think, okay, this is the end. Then you play as Aya, go to Rome, and you do another ending. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, did they just have three teams that didn't either realize that they had, that these were ending? Very strange because you <laughs> figure they would save time and be like, well, Try we have to an tie ending. up all those uh, all those threads. But there, but the other games could have done that. Mm-hmm. And the Templars are always a thing, and the Creed is always a thing. <coughs> I don't know. It just felt very. The end felt very forced. The game was fine. The game was good. It was interesting. I did some. I did a bunch of side stuff. Yeah, that's fine. It's just that ending was was drawn out too much. So I got my trophy list up here. I Uh-oh. got I did ninety percent of the base game. Okay, that's all you need for the platinum, right? No. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, for the base game, you're talking. You only need to do the base game for platinum. Yeah, yes. yeah there's no yes. platinum for the DLCs. Yeah. So there was stuff like complete all underwater location objectives. So that consists of me sailing to a location, diving into the water, doing an objective, and then coming back. There and those know. are those are all over the goddamn place. See, that's 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 a lot of work. That's I, I could do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it, yeah, it's just it's just not. I don't find that fun. None of it's none of it's hard. Yeah. I think. Can I view hidden? Oh, I can. I, I think my goal. And I'm sorry to say this is to beat your your platinum count mm. before the end of this gen. Mm. That way, I'm I, not see, in third I, place. Now I can't let that happen. Now. Yeah. You should better go do oh, all the diving them diving bells. This one was tough too. Upgrade the Adrestia to a legendary status. That's your ship. Yeah. That takes a lot of work and a lot of money and a lot. How of... How close are you though? You've played that game a bunch. Again, it's one of those things that I could easily do. Yeah. But whether I want to or not is the question. But like, how much time is left in that for you? Shouldn't it be close? quite a bit? Because like when when you're buying the legendary upgrades, it's a lot of resources and stuff you need to need to find. Now maybe I can just go buy it all, because the, the, some of the vendors sell the resources. Although if Origins is any indication, that's massively overpriced. Yeah. That one I could probably do. Complete uh, Xenia's uh, quest line. Xenia's. Who's that? I don't, I can't remember, but but it's like a quest line you could just do, like a side quest line. Complete twenty bounties, war contracts, or naval quests from message boards. I'm surprised I didn't do that one, but that one I can easily do. You know what? You've inspired me, Matt. I'm gonna re-download that goddamn game. Of course you are. I'm yeah. gonna put on the skins I paid for. Oh, <laughs> you put on the skins you paid for. I paid for multiple skins. Damn in that you! Game. And I paid for multiple. You can have like ship commanders. No, wait a second. You don't you want to play on the PC with your fancy fancy ass hdr but my trophies are on playstation uh, yeah of course they are yeah i'm gonna get my vita out again i would have to get my vita out again i would have to play the entire game again just to get to these <laughs> these achievements mm-hmm. i'm not doing that be like uh when aaron was about to beat me i went on and just did platinum the the resistance on vita oh yeah that was a good one that one but, wasn't too hard no it wasn't and yeah. i only had to do like the first mission i think there was like some random thing i just didn't do yeah so the thing that's that's ridiculous that I did is I downloaded Bulletstorm. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I've never played it before. I've never seen it. I tried it. playing it. It's not great. I've never seen it before. Like I've never seen screenshots or anything. I've like I've never seen anything. I think I've seen like a screenshot maybe at some point, but I couldn't I couldn't before playing it have told you the aesthetic, the idea, the nothing. The thematic of it is very you though. Very me. One of the like the like a bro shooter type of deal. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's so. freaking hilarious. Um but what's hilarious also is that Marty and I got into like a, a confusion last night of to who made this game. Because he's like, oh, he's like, that's an Epic game. And I was like, no, it's not. It's a Gearbox game. It's both. <laughs> EA published it originally. Oh, wow. <laughs> Epic Epic made it. I think Cliffy B was involved with it because the voice actor, again, this is all speculation. Sp- uh, I'm not sure this is what we were talking about. This is from Marty in my conversation. I didn't, didn't fact check all this. We believe that the voice actor of Marcus is actually the main character in this one. Mm. And then in, in Bulletstorm. And then Gearbox remade it as the full clip edition or whatever it is on PlayStation 4. And that's what I'm playing. And that's why Dude, I think it was Gearbox. This is a PS3 game, right? PS3, PS3 game 360? Like, yeah. And it, and it was it was described <clears throat> as a as a financial failure. And yet they remastered it. And Gearbox took it. Were they hoping to get a sequel out of it then? I there was there's also some weird Duke Nukem content in there. I, it's also one of those games that like politicians use to be like, look at the influence, Bulletstorm. 
That's the name what, means everything. Oh Bullet man, I better, better watch myself. I better not get too influenced. <laughs> yeah. But I'm wondering whether this is a platinumable title. Mm. Pretty good, eh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm one away, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> one away from Tiny, I think. Greg and Colin, who were formerly from IGN, they 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 kind of raced on on getting platinums and trophies and stuff, and they would buy just god awful games just to get the the uh, the platinums. I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to. I'll have to beat you. I'll play something so ridiculous. If those Telltale games are still available, those are e- those are easy platinums. They're, they're easy. basically play the game. They're easy, but they're long, right? You got to play the whole game. But even their games aren't too long. Oh, like maybe ten hours at most. That's not bad. Yeah. So now you got a few key platinums that I never got. Yes. And I had the opportunity to, and I didn't. And you did not. You had God of War and Spider Man. God of War is a big one. It is a big, that one. I probably won't ask. do, but I, I, I still need to finish some DLC on Spider Man as well. So if I go back to that one, might as well clean up those trophies. Yes. Yeah, so like the reason the reason why God of War is hard is because the collectibles are like all over the place because the map is not really meant to be f- you know fully free roam. Well, and those Valkyries, right? And the Val- oh yeah, that's right. Well, those are easy for me now. <laughs> I killed three I killed three of the hardest Valkyries in one night, Ryan. <laughs> Fucking easy, including the queen. So, easy money. Um yeah, so just just as a as a brief as a brief gloat, uh God of War is my is one of my more recent ones. Days Gone and Fallout 76. Oh, Days Gone is another one I could have done. Fuck yeah, you could have. And Seven, I enjoyed every minute of it. 76, I'm close. It's just like a few and then the level 100. Yeah, but so, what is the few? Not not, it, not difficult ones. I can look it up again. But uh, I also did well, Spider-Man, you already mentioned, mm-hmm. and Far Cry New Dawn. I, I think I did New Dawn. I have New Dawn, Far Cry 5, Dying Light, Fallout 4. There is... Which one was I looking up? Oh, Fallout 76. Fallout 76. <coughs> I'm at 91% for, for, for Fallout. Oh, Ghost Recon Wildlands as well. Yeah, we did that one, yeah. Did you actually do that one too? We, we did that oh, one, Oh, you yeah. did that one too, okay. Yep. We steeped the hell out of that game, man. Man, I got a lot of... I played a lot of steep. I played a lot of steep in my time. Somehow I have 32% of the Red Dead Redemption 2 trophies, which is crazy because I've only played online and have not not actually looked at them. Okay, so the ones I need for Fallout are reach level 100, read 20 magazines. I've not done that, but that's that's easily accomplish- accomplishable. Hack 50 terminals. And this is the only kind of tricky one. Kill 20 players. Well, sorry, c- kill 20 players... What was the other one? Hack, f- hack fifty terminals. Oh, hack fifty terminals. I, was, yeah. I thought you said hack twenty players. Like I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, God damn, that's yeah. violent. Freaking watchdogs. Um, if you could find someone to boost with you, you could get that twenty players. Pretty easy. I guess we could do the what we did in uh, the division. Remember yeah. that? You join as a party, and then you just leave the party, and then you're standing right next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do that? <laughs> you want to help me out with that? I don't know about that now. I don't know. I can. I can we got give, this competition I, I can going. Get Laura, here. To help. <laughs> Laura will help me. Oh, son of a bitch! Yeah. <laughs> Good luck updating the fucking game. I still can't. Oh, oh, I got the space. Don't worry. I'm not screwing around when I said last night when these new consoles come out. So I already have the money aside for the consoles. Uh, that's what I do. I just put cash aside. So when I pre-order these things, I'll probably put a couple hundred down when I get them, or when I like do the pre-order, and. Uh, if they don't come with a serious hard drive, I might very seriously get like an eight terabyte drive and throw the, throw it in each of them. That is if they're replaceable. Correct. Might still do it if it's external possible. Like if they're if they're external compatible, that that's fine by me too. I don't really care because they're touting the speeds of these things, so I imagine they're like NVMe's. Which but is, I was which is, wondering, which, which can be used for replaceable, but just yes. depends on how they would make that work. Also, the question of whether that's just for the OS and whether there is a mechanical in there, whether they've decided to do that, or if they have a mechanical slot, potentially. Like, that Xbox looks kind of computerish. Like, maybe there's a place where you can just shove a quote-unquote external into it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. To make it an internal. Yeah. Now, here's a question. If they launch multiple SKUs, like, if they have, like, a... If the Series X is, like, the, the end-all, be-all of the, all the great uh, um, Xboxes for next-gen... What was that noise? That was Siri. Damn it. <laughs> 
Austin. What's going on over there? <laughs> Apparently, you don't need hay anymore. You just need to say Siri, and she'll, she'll show up sometimes. Um, let's say the Xbox Series X is the, the top of the line. Is that what you go for, or, or you, do you want the, whatever one you can get? You're like saying if, if they launch... Let's say there's a Series X and, I don't know, Series Y, right? Like day one. Day one. But the Series Y isn't as powerful, but it's cheaper. Are you going to go for the top of the line, or are you going to go for well, the, the I have, more affordable um, one? I have a budget. Depending on price, too, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, well, like, I have a budget. Like, in budget, I mean by, like, I've been tossing money aside. Mm-hmm. Uh... I think I have a budget of. I think it's a grand off, off the side already. Like I've just that I've just collected over change and every other damn thing I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have like a grand cash just sitting there. So I was like estimating five hundred a piece, and if one was a little more, I can spend two hundred of my own like money. Mm-hmm. Well, it's all my own money, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say if there's an X, like okay, if if. I would say if there's like an a, like an X version, like an Xbox a, Xbox One X, like a high end version of the Xbox, I'd probably buy that. The PlayStation, if I do it, <coughs> I might buy a regular version. Maybe. I think I, I think we really need to see the capabilities of these things. And is it worth it? Because you you don't have a 4K TV or anything either. That's the question too. Is like if it's just storage space. And this external drive is going to be cheaper. I might as well just do that. If it's storage space, but I think it's ridiculous. Like if it's four terabyte and eight terabyte, I'm just I'll just have the four terabyte. I don't care. I can't see them doing four terabyte. Uh, that would be expensive for an NVMe. <laughs> That'd be expensive, yeah. Uh, but I will say, well, there's also the fact that I could stream stuff, I guess. But I don't really, I don't really know if I want to rely on that. I would say I need to see the capabilities, but like. In their current stance, like if if, the, if it's like the PS3 and or the PS4 Xbox One generation right now, if I were buying new consoles now, I'd probably buy the Pro and the X. Probably. Mm. See, I don't know if I even need to buy the Xbox, just because I have a PC. That, see, that's a question too. Is if this thing does run the Epic Game Store and stuff, which I have a hard time believing, but that is a rumor, and I but I, I, mean, I wouldn't e- be that surprised. Even if it doesn't, there's no reason to buy it if you have a decent PC, just because. All the all the exclusives come out uh, on PC as well. Yes. So like Gears Six is going to come out on PC, you know. But now we have this we have this split platform issue, where we have Adriano only on PC. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know where Marty would be. We have me on everything. I think Marty's leaning towards Xbox right now just because of the offerings. Okay, so have. let's just say Marty's but, uh, like a wild card based on who has what. But Bloodborne and God of War 2 mm-hmm. are console sellers for him. So, I mean, he's, then he's a PlayStation guy then. Yeah. So, we have this problem where we're all on different things and it's not like you can... You can't run Discord on all the consoles or no, any but, of the consoles. No, but the Xbox is cross-platform with the PC. But not with the PS5. No. It'd be nice if something like Discord was just on everything. But see, e- even if... Regardless of what the situation is, I will have a PS5. And it will have a, a PC with Xbox support, essentially. Yeah. So it's not... It's, I'm, I'm in no concern. I'll be available N- wherever. No, but the concern is the chatting and the platform stuff. We've already had an issue where we were trying to cross-play... Some people don't want to go into game chat. Some people don't want to oh, don't yeah. want to like <laughs> right, download yeah. apps. Some people don't, and it's, so it's like everyone has like an ultimatum. Yeah, and then it's just like, well, someone's gonna have to give, I guess. Like it, it's, it is a problem. It is a problem. Yeah. All right. Uh, I have gotten back into uh, Outer Worlds. Surprisingly, I actually thought I was gonna be done with that game, but there's kind of a lull in new games right now. You know, big old lull. And so I was like, oh, might as well go back to that, try it out. And it's one of those things where it's like I was playing it and I was I didn't get far enough into it to really have it like um what do you call it? Just like sink in? Y- or just everything like meld together for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I went back in, I I I bought like new armor and new weapons and stuff, and so it was actually decently specced. And then I had I was having more fun with it after that. You know. Cool. So uh, it's it's enjoyable now. I'm I'm liking it. And I think it's a pretty short game, so I, I don't think I'll be in it for too long. But there's nothing really on the horizon right now either, is there? I guess... Uh, Everything was sort of delayed, and now there's new consoles, so then we have this weird problem, and then... Yeah. I I honestly don't think the consoles are going to release this year either. 
I think that's already a given, isn't it? Not with not because of coronavirus. I don't think they're going to be able to come out this year. I think there'll be a twenty a twenty twenty one release. I mean, they could just be in really low supply. I don't. I mean, that's very possible. I don't know whether they would want to do that again. Because they'll start they'll start getting people like revolting again. I remember the 360 was like a goddamn. But, that was a uh, that was a disaster. But I mean, like the the Wii was impossible to get. You know, uh, this this I guess the Switch was pretty well stocked. Um, every new phone that comes out is impossible to get within the first couple of weeks. You know what I mean? I don't. Think it, it's hard like, to get on a whim. Yeah. But most of these things are pre-orderable. I'm wondering whether they're not even going to be able to reach the pre-order numbers. Yeah. Like, because they'll, they'll get whatever well, many pre-orders, and they probably might not be able to fill that. It depends when they start production, too, right? What what the status is of, of the workers in, in the manufacturing uh, facilities. Well, that's another question. Yeah, that's another question. Like, China is affected, but I don't think Thailand is too much in terms of, like, manufacturing and stuff like that. So I wonder if... But these consoles are probably built in China, though, I imagine. Well, probably Thailand, too, right? Depends what their, what their contracts know. are. That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's what's new. What What are you playing it on? What? Outer, outer, PC. Outer World? Because I had the uh, Game Pass. And so I was like, oh. Oh, right. on PC? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you were playing it on a console, like on Xbox. No. I, I hardly touch that Xbox. Damn it. The only time I do is when I'm I'm chatting with you and Alex. Which is the most on, outrageous uh, thing is use the phone. But the console's just right there. It's just it's no different really. I will say one thing based on our thing. They don't have to worry about the, my phone battery dying. The damn PlayStation app should you should be able to join the goddamn chat. Yeah. Because the Vita you could. Yeah, literally when someone invites you it says PS4 and Vita. Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> they're working on it. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, we uh, actually I can't say that, but we don't know that. All right, let's hop into the stories for this week. Um, this one's real quick. PUBG update 6.2. Speaking of crossplay, they're adding uh, PS4 and Xbox One uh, crossplay. Now, they've already had that for a while, but they're now allowing parties, much like we do in Call of Duty. So they're, they're, you can actually join up in a party together and then go play your, your matches and whatnot, which apparently you weren't able to do before. I guess it was just random people, PlayStation and Xbox people running around. Did you ever play PUBG? On mobile once. Just that's it. Yeah, it's kind of taking like a backseat to both uh, Fortnite and Apex. You well, don't hear do they too have much. Seasons? Do they have seasons of PUBG? I don't really know what the hell they. I don't know. You see the new season for Fortnite? Some gold dude, right? It's a, a lot of gold stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. I new know. new battle pass and some pretty cool looking items. Uh, the graphics have gotten a lot better in that game. I feel like just the design of their characters. The graphics have definitely improved. Yeah. I remember playing it way back when like. Bushes were like a 2D piece of crap. I remember us watching the, uh, what was it, Save the World or whatever it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like looking at this game. That was long before it exploded as a Battle Royale. Yep. That was crazy. It's crazy that it became such a big thing from something that was so like incidental. <laughs> I don't, and you can't predict that stuff, eh? Like no one could have kn- known that was going to happen. No. I and like, so. and like why? Why was it, why is the, why is the Battle Royale so enticing, you know? It might be because it's free. Yeah, probably for sure. Like PUBG is like there's an entry cost, but with Fortnite, it's just like, well, you guys want to play Fortnite? All it takes is a download. You remember Rocket League too? That exploded into fame because it was it launched free on PlayStation Plus. PS, and, PS Plus, yeah. Yeah, now that's a huge game too. Well, oh no, Apex is free too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one launched out of nowhere, big success. Well, that's the only reason why I played Apex. I played Apex up until season three uh, with Alex here and there, and uh, I I would never have bought it. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that much. But right. I played it because. Which kept, like, if you have people playing it, it keeps it keeps the people that are paying playing it too. I do, yeah, I do wonder if anyone would have would have actually bought Fortnite. Let's say it came out as a seventy nine dollar game. Probably not. Would someone have bought it? Maybe it probably it, wouldn't have been that big. No, that's crazy, eh? That's literally literally nuts. Oh yeah, before I forget, speaking of Assassin's Creed, you can get Syndicate on Epic right now. I think I claimed it. I don't know though. That's a good one. Play it. I'm I got I'm taking a hiatus from AC Actually, for a while. It's really God damn. it's really hard to go back to the old style AC after playing Origins and Odyssey though. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just it's it feels because I tried to play uh, Rogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it just feels very clunky. It's it's tough. I think it might be one of those things too where 
I've played a lot of I've played a lot of fucking AC in my we time. We all have. Everyone Hot knows, damn. Yeah. They keep releasing the damn things. I mean, it's fun enough to beat. Like I beat it. It's not if I hated it, I wouldn't have played it. You know. Odyssey was one of my favorite games of this gen. Like it's it's nuts. That's a little nuts, eh? It's nuts. Yeah. I didn't. I wouldn't have uh, expected that. All right, moving on. Cyberpunk 2077 will launch on NVIDIA's cloud gaming service. This comes to us from GameSpot. Uh, GeForce Now members uh, can play their Steam copy of Cyberpunk 2077 when it releases on September 17th. Uh, Founders subscribers will get access to RTX On, a higher fidelity resolution using ray tracing technology. NVIDIA said the higher resolution will be fully optimized and instantly available even on your Mac laptop. (laughs) I enjoy that. I mean, that's what this this guy was using a 2013 MacBook Pro, and we were playing Ark. A 2013. Survival. 2013. Wow, that's incredible. You just got to stream it. That's all you need. Yeah. Now, one thing that's weird: there's a free tier, and a there's a free tier of this NVIDIA GeForce Now. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And then there's a there's a paid tier. Both of them kick you off after a certain amount of time. So what do you do? I guess you better save. That doesn't seem right. When you pay the. This is what I was told by them. I did not. I did not fact check this. this Wait, is told I was, by the the Mac by the guy, guy who was using it. The guy, was, it was Mike. Mike was using it. Okay. He was using he was using his MacBook, and he said that it. I think he said it for the premium version, it was six hours, and for the free version, it's one hour, and he get kicked off. But he's he's never reached the limit, so he's not sure whether <coughs> it says like you're getting kicked off soon, please save or something. He's not sure. And then you can just log back in, like it doesn't matter. You just go whoop and just turn back on after that. I I find that unlikely, but I mean, who knows? I I'm gonna look it up right now. That's it. I mean, six hours is a long time, but I'm sure there's people who play that long at least. You know, six hours isn't that crazy if you're a person hosting a server. Mm-hmm. It also isn't that crazy if you're at like a land party because you're gonna be playing all afternoon. So right. it's like you know, um, join today. I hate this crap when it's just like I'd like to. Yeah, here it is. Free, zero dollars a month, standard access with one hour long session length. Uh, so the free tier for, makes sense. Now for the founders edition, this is a limited time offer. Six dollars and forty nine cents a month for twelve months pr- includes priority access, extended se- extended <laughs> session length, but RTX on, and free ninety day introductory period. See, it's extended, not not indefinite. But they don't tell you what's extended. How well, I mean, long? he told me it was six hours, so I assume he looked up a review before he used it. Hmm. Now, I, I I was in the beta for a long while, and I I tried it a couple times at at your house. <clears throat> it it worked decently well there. Um, the best success I had with it was at uh, a hotel, which was incredible. See that that type of stuff is cool. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a there's a place for streaming to fill in the gaps, but it should be, or at least to me, it's a secondary thing. Like for example, th- my Fallout seventy six update didn't happen because it's it's apparently apparently eighty six gigs isn't enough space for it to, to download and install. That's how much free space I have my drive. To be clear, so what I could have done if it was streamable was if you guys wanted to play it that day, right. which you guys weren't, but if you were, I could just be like, oh, I guess I'll just stream it tonight. Like that's a good fill in. That's a good filler. <coughs> and I wonder if they're thinking about the size of these games. In the next, let's say, five plus years, we're already looking at games that are like 100 gigs, 120 gigs. You yeah. know, um, it's going to become more and more difficult to not only store a lot of games on your console, but to then download them, right? And so I wonder if they're saying that streaming might be the alternative then for the for not needing a bigger hard drive. Well, I did a 68 gig update to Call of Duty the other night, right? Yeah, in that in that a thing. At least you have good internet though, but that, that hour, still takes yeah. a long time, even even with your fast internet there. Well, the thing so. that sucks about these these damn things is a lot of them have this weird unpacking process where it downloads a little bit stops, mm-hmm. downloads a little bit stops, downloads a little bit stops. Does it on Steam as well, and then with PlayStation it downloads it all really quick if you have a good internet connection, but then it does the stupid copying sometimes. Yeah, which is absolutely ridiculous. The amount of time it takes to copy is outrageous. Do you think the copying is like what's happening on Steam when it's like stopping and stuff? It's like unpacking, I would think. Does it just do it all at the end? Probably. And then I do find that sometimes it does do that on Steam. Like I find each game's different. Sometimes it'll download a little section, and then stop, and then you'll just see your disc going up, your disc user. So clearly, it's like unpacking or doing whatever. Um, but I will say that the copying on PlayStation, even with the Steam stuff, is is way longer, or at least it seems way longer because it's all at once. 
It's freaking horrible, honestly. What makes more sense about the, the uh, G4s now, though, is that you buy the games on Steam, right? Yeah. And then you can stream them on G4s now. See, but th- with that is that's something I can get behind. That's like yes. a backup thing. With with uh, Stadia, you only have that streamable version, which I don't like. And so, like, you could be like playing, I don't know, uh, Red Dead on, or yeah, you could be playing like Red Dead at uh, your computer. And then you have to go out on vacation or whatever. You can play it at the hotel if you have fast enough internet. Like I did that one but, time. But oftentimes at a hotel you don't. Oftentimes you don't. But I'm just saying, using it as an example. When you're yeah, out, yeah. you don't have your, your console with you. Yeah, yeah You know, yeah. you can just stream it that one time. But with Stadia, you only can stream, which is kind of strange. And there's not going to be an option, I don't think, to, to download those games. Right? I don't think so. Right? I don't know because and that could only cause, be possible because it'd be Chromecast. Like, yeah. th- there's no way. Yeah, yeah. No. Like, Un- unless they release a console yeah. of some sort, or or a or game launcher the, on, the PC. on on PC. Yeah, yeah. So we're still in the early stages of this stuff, though. So I guess it will it'll probably change over time, and we'll see where it, where it takes us. I'll say this. I'll say I'll say one thing for streaming. I'm totally fine with it um, for multiplayer only games because if the internet's if the internet's not good, then I can't play it anyway. Yeah. Good news for Mac gamers, though. I mean, it worked. It like I was using it all day. I used it too. At 2013 a, at, at a hotel. MacBook here. Yeah, you were using it. Like, yeah. damn. <laughs> all right, uh, let's move on here. How do you feel about video game movies, Matt? I feel like they're trying too hard, and they're probably all bad. Although Sonic's doing well. Is it actually? Yeah. Oh wow. Performing well in the box office. Critic- uh, how's the how's that critical? I think it's good. And yeah. And, and um, they're already talking about a sequel. So maybe Sonic broke through. Well, here here's a here's a little tidbit in there. It's a good thing they changed his design because you look like an idiot before. That, there's it, my feedback. It's hard to quantify though how much that helped or 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 didn't matter at all. I wouldn't have seen it if it was if it was the other design. But are you going to see it? No, but I would watch it on Netflix now. No, oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And if someone was like, "Let's go see Sonic," I'd do it. Right. I wouldn't go see it before. I'd been like, "Yeah." Well, how do you feel about a Borderlands film? Uh, <laughs> as boring as the game. This is a weird one. So, yeah, the Borderlands film will be helmed by famed horror director Eli Roth. Comes to us from GameSpot. Uh, the director of Hostel and Knock Knock will helm the upcoming Borderlands movie with Chernobyl writer Craig Mazin penning the latest draft and the pairing of Avi Arid and Ari Arid producing. Roth, Roth was revealed as the director by Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford, who will be an executive producer on the Lionsgate uh, project, along with Take-Two Interactive CEO Strauss Zelnick. Uh, in the tweet, Pitchford welcomed Roth to the project while also teasing more information to come at Gearbox's main theater show at PAX East on February 27th. Now, uh, what I find odd about this, and I never really thought about this before, but one of the things people love about the Borderlands series is the characters and the dialogue and, and, and the crazy wackiness of it. Mm-hmm. But they're bringing in other writers. like They're bringing in like Hollywood writers, but they're not the ones who wrote the game. How can they match that same kind of thing that everyone loves about Borderlands? You know what I mean? Not saying well, they're not incapable, but it's like, why? What's this notion of having to bring in the Hollywood guys, you know, to write it? I feel like this is the. This is, I think, where the uh, the issue comes in with video game movies is I don't think they should be treated any differently than a regular movie. So you think they should use the Hollywood guys? I think they should use the Hollywood guys because if they don't, if they don't, you're getting well, you're you're you might be getting like a fanboy's perspective, and alternatively, you're going to get somebody that's trying to adapt a medium which you you control it mm-hmm. to a medium which you watch it only. I think that you need the DC EU is a good example where most of those movies are so so or or bad. Um, my official rating for BVS is 0.5 out of 10. <laughs> uh, so they can, you can put that there. Uh, but anyway, like I would say that those were made by a fan of the comics, and they tried to take the comics and make it into a movie. I think like that's a bad idea. I think you're supposed to make a movie themed in like in the comics. In this right. in this in this way, it'd be the co- the movie is themed after the game. Yeah, uh, yeah. You changed my mind because I felt the same way about Star Wars. Is they they brought in all these Star Wars or like fans of Star Wars to write the scripts and stuff, and it's bad. And like J.J. Abrams, he's a capable director, and 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 I like some of the stories he's written. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but it just seems like they should focus on making a good movie first, 
rather than making a Star Wars movie. Well, do you know what I think I think it it might be is if you're a big fan of something, you oftentimes will attach yourself to a piece of it mm-hmm. or to like a component of it and you will have an invested interest in that one thing. So for example, in Fallout, if I was to make a Fallout movie, one of my one of the things I do in Fallout that I don't do in any other game is read a bunch of memos and stuff like that. So I would I would and I know I would already already know I would try to do this. I would try to recreate those side stories in a movie and that's really not movie compatible having right. all these weird little B plots. But I'm like attached to that in a follow game and therefore that will that would manifest itself somehow in the film and probably be pretty bad because that's that's what follow is to you, right? Th- yeah, I have an invested interest. If yeah. you have someone that just plays through or watch even watches a let's play might even be a better thing if you mm-hmm. get like holly got hollywood guy that looks at it and goes okay yep it's post apocalyptic there's these weird creatures there's these factions okay and then they can then he goes yeah. that would probably that's probably better and it, it just feels like when the fans make it too it's like they they throw in the fan service and it just feels unearned you know i would, I would do the same thing i would have little 101s or something around like it but i would be like fuck yeah like people are gonna pick up on that but i shouldn't be like that I, I just hate the blatantness of it. Like in in Star Wars, a couple of times they just it's right there in front of everyone. It's not in the background where the fans can be like, "Hey, I saw that thing in the background." But they made it like the focus of certain scenes in Star Wars. The the little ball, I didn't pick up on it, but Adriana was saying the the ball, like the the training ball in the in Force Awakens. Yeah, where he like picks it up and clearly like looks. at oh, it. Oh, he's right in the camera. He yeah. pulls it out of the bag, looks at it, and tosses it aside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's they're like they're like putting it right in your face the freaking chess game over and over again yeah like enough with the damn chess game and here's the weird thing so uh the force awakens takes place takes place 30 years after return of the jedi yeah and yet when they made that chess game when he turns it on the characters are in the same position as they were in the original movie Oh, okay. But it's like 30 years have gone by and no one's played that game no again? No one's turned that on, yeah. No one's turned that on and moved the thing? That's It's like me. they think about it like, oh, this would be cool if there was an exact same position, but it just, just doesn't make sense. Here's a here's a question about, about Star Wars for you. Why is it always the same damn formula where they always, like, it, there's always an action scene, a problem arises, usually due to that action scene, they end up in a cantina, and then they solve the problem? That's because... What did they, uh... They don't need that formula. <coughs> I was watching the Red Letter Media stuff, and they, they had a good name for it. And I, I can't remember exactly what it was. But it was something like, they have idea bankruptcy. Something but they can't s- think of, like... Something a- to that effect, where they, where they, they, like, it's so... Star Wars has, ne- has become so refined and, and put into a box, where you have to have a Jedi, you have to have a Sith, you have to have a cantina scene... You have to have a bounty hunter. You have to have a scoundrel type character, you know. And it's like they're like, this is what makes Star Wars. So we have to have it in every movie. Yeah, it's like these. We are have the to have this dirty cantina in every movie, just because they had a dirty cantina in the first movie, you know. But why can't they think of of new ideas? Actually, this just popped in my head when you were saying that. I think one of the major problems with this with this Star Wars series is actually like the new trilogy, is actually the the amount of faith i guess the amount of faith they put in the force in the force itself that's like totally written by like a fanboy perspective where the it's like the guy who wrote it jj or whoever is like super into the force and they make this force this big thing mm-hmm. i feel like that's a mistake i feel like the actual people in the universe know of the force and yes some stuff is amazing but it's not that amazing. You don't need an orchestral like thing when something happens, when someone's like moving rocks or pulling things or appearing as a force ghost. I feel like you don't need that. I feel like that isn't as dramatic as it is in the scene, and it's goofy. That was another one of those fan servicey things where when Luke, I mean, we're getting into spoilers. I don't know if, <laughs> if we've said that, but yeah, the last that, well, Rise I, of Skywalker. I, I don't think I've spoiled anything Star Wars. I think, but, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get into some spoiler some alert. Rise of Skywalker uh, spoilers. When Luke lifts up the X wing. You know, for Ray, yeah, that's that's from that's calling back to uh, Empire Strikes Back when Yoda lifts up the X wing out of the water. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Again, fan service in the face, and they they do the whole thing with the orchestra swells. See, and, it's not that impressive. It's, it's thing, just and, like and Luke's like trying real hard, even though he's like one with the Force. He apparently still has to try really hard to to move the. <laughs> See, it's not X-wing. it's not impressive. It, it it would be it's impressive for Ray to develop her skills once. 
and then she's developed her force skills. Now she's going to use them. It's not impressive to to pull rocks away and stuff. They also blew open like force abilities too. Like they they turned it up to 11 in this one. You know, where it was just it was just kind of over the top for me. It's too much. Like when he shoots the lightning up into the sky and like attacks like a thousand ships at once. It's like that's insane. How 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 did you ever lose when you I, could freaking blow up or stop ships from working like a thousand at a time? I thought that was and I could be completely off base. I thought that was due to the atmosphere being conductive. That's why that sh- that's why that planet did, did they establish that? I thought they did, and again, I don't remember the exact quote, but at the time I distinctly remember believing it was due to the fact that the magnetosphere or whatever of the planet, that atmosphere area, the reason why those ships couldn't see, couldn't tell which way was up was, and they needed that beacon. Remember they needed the beacon to tell which way was up and down? The be- That was because the atmosphere was constantly in a storm and was conductive to a degree. Mm. So I thought it was just him firing a beam up and then the atmosphere was using it. Uh, I th- I got that impression. I don't know if that's factually correct. I don't know if that's factually correct just because, I mean, that might be the case, yes. But it didn't attack the Empire ships. Oh, that's a good point. You know, yeah, that's a good point. Um, Although, unless so I think he clearly he clearly directed them to those ships, and uh, I don't know. That's too much. But I just it, again, it's one of those classic tropes of a giant beam shooting up into the air. Now Star Wars has it. You know, a stupid giant beam. Lame. And uh, so they just they just made the force too big in my, in my mind, and uh, so. This is why I'm scared of the inevitable Stargate reboot. <laughs> they're going to do something ridiculous. You know what they're going to do? I know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to have this big scene where the Stargate starts dialing. Durn, the big like, ring starts spinning, and then it's going to just open. And it's going to be like, cool, but like this opens all the time. Like yeah. We have like a bunch of SG teams. Like It's not that impressive. Yeah. Do it once. They'll be like, woo, and everyone's screaming. And then it's like, okay, but I, I'm, I'm scared they're going to do it all the time. And it's going to be like, oh, good, the Stargate opened again. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's the same type of fan servicey crap, where, uh I just think it wasn't. They just need to take their time with it. Like they're they're just, they're just moving way too fast. Why don't they just make a movie? And like Ray was instantly good with the Force. Not like Ray as a character. I, I you know I like her as a Jedi, and I I want to, I want to read more comics and books about what she does after the movie. You know, I like Ray as a, as a character, but they they made her like super powerful off the bat, and she beat Kylo Ren what, right away. Luke's first battle with Vader, he, he Vader mops the floor with Luke. I don't think I don't think we should have seen Kylo Ren's face until the third one. That's another thing with Hollywood; they're obsessed with showing people's faces now, you know. Or at the very Although least, or credit. at the very least, they shouldn't have met until the end. Well, I think they could have met. I mean, I, I don't I don't want them to follow the original trilogy to the T. Vader and and Luke never really met in the first movie. They fight in the second one. Luke loses. Yeah. And then Luke finishes his training and then comes back and, and, and wins. But this right? could be a thing where she's constantly, you know, how like they're doing this weird force thing where they're they're like jumping into each other's like moments and they're taking stuff from each other's pockets and stuff. really weird. It's just that's weird. What, that's for me with the force but, like exploding into all these new dimensions. That would have been cool if he was like, quote unquote, haunting her. Where she just like kind of like does like a little distraction while she's doing something. She's like, "What the hell was that?" And then she gets distracted, and that fucks her up. But she doesn't know and see Kylo Ren like in a window, like, "Huh?" Ah! Like they're <laughs> looking at each other. Like you know what I mean? It's just yeah. dumb. Like it's goofy. Yeah. <sighs> oh well. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. It could be Stargate Origins. Look, I I enjoyed my time with them. It's definitely not the best Star Wars content we've ever gotten, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. To, let's get back into gaming here. Uh, so the Xbox Star Wars game. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. I could have put one in the. I, I could have put that article about. Uh, we don't need it. Yeah. Uh, Xbox Series X includes bold ideas for competing in next gen. This comes to us from Gamespot. Uh, looking ahead, Spencer Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, said on the Gamer Tag Radio podcast that you, you can expect Microsoft to launch bold strategies to promote the Xbox uh, Series X as it attempts to win back. Uh, market share from PlayStation, and he said, We made the decision. The decision was actually really pushed forward by one of our marketing leads, and she's awesome. She just stood up in a room, and, and she said, We should do something bold, something we've never done before. Um, And apparently Phil Spencer wasn't too on board with that. And what he's talking about is revealing it at the Game Awards in December. Oh. 
because it's still it's more than a year out at that point, or I guess probably about a year until the actual a release. year ish, whatever. That's fine. They were well ahead of Sony announcing anything. We still don't know what the Sony box looks like. You I know. have a funny feeling it looks like that weird intercooler now. What? You know that weird intercooler that they showed? Like uh like that weird like V shape thing. So That's the dev kit though. No, yeah. So what I've read is that that, that type of intercooler is very cheap. <laughs> and so they do that for dev kits intentionally because they don't want the dev kits to be ridiculous and it's big so it masks the look of the box. The last rumor I've heard is that Sony is not cheaping out on the cooling. So what I'm wondering is, I wonder if they're embarrassed because the, de- pe- the people made fun of the dev kits. I wonder if it actually looks dumb. I hope it doesn't look dumb. It might look dumb. Because it, why not just show us the box? Because you can keep all the rest of like, well, it, the I stuff mean, like the price under wraps. So why not show us the box? Sony's on top right now. So they're, 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 they, have, they have the ability not to be pushed around by Microsoft right now. That's not being pushed around. No, but but Showing Microsoft us the box ain't gonna break. No, the but whole I'm console. saying I mean, what I'm saying is Microsoft showed their box. That doesn't mean Sony has to come running out and show their box. They're ahead of the game right now. No, no, I'm just wondering what the, so, what the idea is. Yeah. So uh, Phil Spencer continued to say, "Let's face it, we're not in the marketing uh, market position we wanted to be in this last generation. I don't think we're going to get uh, to disrupt and grow our business just doing what we've always done. Let's go try to do new things." And when she first brought the idea to me, honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan. I was like, well, there's going to be a lot of other games there. But eventually he did agree, and he said that it, it went well. And I think he's pretty happy with what they're going to do. And he's also teasing more bull strategies to, to promote the next gen of Xbox. Project xCloud is probably going to launch with it, eh? Probably. That'd be interesting. Is that in the beta somewhere, or what is that? Can you use it? I think that's in some... I think it's probably in a closed beta or of some sort at this time. I, th- mm. I think we've actually covered that before. I don't remember now. I don't I don't recall. But there's too many damn services out there now, but... Do you like the name xCloud? I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, it is a working title, so I wouldn't... I guess it's like I wouldn't, Xbox, I wouldn't X worry about cloud. it, although I don't mind the xCloud. I just think it's too separate from Xbox. Xbox is the brand for gaming for Microsoft. xCloud is a little disjointed just because it has x I there's hope, x on everything i hope they n- rename it i hope it's closer to the xbox name but i don't want it to be something like how microsoft does where they have like windows and then azure and like i don't like how they do all these different things didn't one drive used to have a different name sky drive sky drive <laughs> oh man i remember that yeah <laughs> Uh, that kind of made sense back then. It makes sense, but one, I think OneDrive is a lot better name. OneDrive is a OneDrive is a better name, but I feel like they really should have kept with that one naming, and then they didn't, which I don't like. Oh, like I I think that Windows Xbox One, well, Xbox about? Series X, like like it's a new gen, so I can see some new branding, but I really feel like it should have been called Windows One. But you'll know why it's called Ten. I don't. <laughs> want to hear that ever again? That was a fucking horrible conference too. Well, I'm excited. I um, this is this is competition at its best when we when when they're behind, they gotta they gotta be more scrappy. You know, yeah, they gotta do more stuff. Um, in terms of services, they already seem like they're ahead. They're lining up their first party titles with all their new first party purchases. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think it's gonna be a good fight. Do you know what we need actually from Xbox and? A little bit from Sony, although I haven't had that too much of an issue with it. Probably just because I, because of how I configured it, is we need better, and this is not all their fault. We need better Xbox Live and PSN access to the home with Open NAT. Oh, <laughs> right. like remember I was fighting my console for like months because it's just something updated, and all of a sudden I just couldn't join parties for a long period. And then I kept getting signed out of Xbox Live, and it was just like. Nothing changed. All the hardware is the same. Just like other than the app update, it I, was. I wired in my PS4 and had trouble. Wired in your PS4. People on. If you look it up, it is a major issue across everything. Like I think we should start straightening it out. I yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Like, it's bad. The idea that that normal average consumers have to do that port forwarding crap, you know, that's ridiculous. 
I I would even say that that's acceptable because they can't control all the damn the router guys. And the router guys are only like, you know, they have a piece of hardware that interfaces with the protocols we have at hand. Like the ports are a reality of life. Yeah. I would say though that they should maybe work with the work with the um people, like work with the router guys, or we need to have some sort of thing where they they have official pages where they're like this is how you fix this and this is like definitively how you fix this. Yeah. Not try this, try this. Try this, try this, try this, try this. Like, no more trying 80 things. Yeah. Like, come on. You know, I wonder if they'll add uh, uh, HomeKit support or Google Home support. Already done. Hmm? Already done. Already done. You can take internal Maxbox with my Google Assistant. And, and Alexa. What's it connected to? Wi-Fi? What do you mean? Oh, it just, it just sends a signal? Yeah. I You go to the Google Home app, you connect your Xbox, done. Oh, okay. All right, never mind then. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, I haven't done it. I still don't trust hard smart home stuff to turn things on, other than lights. Have your lights ever turned on? No. Well, there you go. <laughs> no, but the problem is, is this. Here, okay, here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I have auto off on most things now, but here's the issue. I have a surround sound system, the uh, receiver. Okay, when you when you have the Xbox, so the, how I have it set up, like a normal thing, is you have your console, HDMI is into the receiver. Okay. And there's a bunch of consoles, so they all go into the receiver, and then I select which which console I want on the receiver, and the receiver has a single HDMI out to the television. Mm. That's fine. The PlayStation sends a ghost signal when it's in sleep and keeps everything on. When the PlayStation goes to sleep, even when it's asleep and whatever, it keeps the... Well, the, like um, impressed, you mean? It, yeah, so it sends a ghost signal, and it keeps my TV on. I don't care if the receiver's on. Some people just leave the receiver's on all the time. I don't care if the receiver's on if it's not being used, because I don't think it has an auto-sleep timer. <coughs> um... But it keeps it sends a signal, and my my TV constantly goes like signal not supported, no signal found. Signal not supported, mm. no signal. It's sending like a pulse. So it's like checking for. It's like signal. checking, but the Xbox just shuts right off, and then everything. If I were to shut off my Xbox and leave, or even I would just leave and leave everything on, eventually my TV would shut off after four hours, and my play, my Xbox would shut off after like an hour or whatever it is. Mm. But my receiver again, don't care about the receiver. That's fine. You can just sit there on. It's not a big deal because it's not actually doing anything. But I don't want my TV and my console on, and my PlayStation. It will constantly send that ghost signal and fuck everything up. All right. Well, yeah. So it sucks. <laughs> you got some issues there. Right? It's just well, that's actually like that's that's got to be an issue some other people experience too. Like it's sending this ghost signal out. I mean, it's it if there's a signal coming through, then your stuff doesn't go to sleep. That's just that's just normal. Right. Freaking mess. Yeah. Speaking of messes, um, PlayStation has canceled their PAX East attendance due to the coronavirus. And also PlayStation and Facebook have canceled their GDC appearances due to coronavirus. Because um, a lot of, I think a lot of their employees, I'm not sure why Facebook is, but uh, I, I guess a lot of PlayStation employees might be in China or from China or in Asia generally because they're in Japan, you know, flying all the way to, to Germany for GDC. Is that in Germany? Am I mixing that up? Uh, I might don't Might be in remember. the US. Um, either way, they're, they're flying to, to the Western world. Um, and I guess they don't want to uh, risk anyone. So that's pretty crazy. It's, it's affecting production of all sorts of industries. It's affecting Tesla. It's affecting Apple. It's pretty bad. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't looked up any news on it lately, but uh, is it still real bad? It's still bad. Um, a bunch of... Uh, there was an outbreak somewhere else, too. And oh, they're great. they're worrying. They're saying that the the uh, the door is closing or the window is closing of when they can keep it contained. So once it Where starts Where else is this outbreak? It might have been in Ukraine or something like that. I can't, oh, remember. Great. I can't remember. So it's like far away, like decently far don't, away. Don't 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 quote me on that, but yeah, it's 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 sprouting up in other areas. It might have been Iran, something like that. Um and so they're like as it as it continues to spring up in other places, they're like we can't contain this anymore. And so that that window is closing, that time period it's not closed yet. There's still time to contain this. But like, there's no. It's not like as if there's not efforts. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, we're we're done. So it's getting pretty worrisome. It's but, pretty uh, bad. Yeah. It feels like you're watching like uh, a, a a pandemic movie. Like this is the beginning. Like the, in, the intros. Or, the intros. The, the news is all like, oh, like the twenty more cases and hundred more cases, and you know. So this is it could be the and, then, the, and then like twenty eight weeks later, with the Americans have to save us. <laughs> 
All right, that's all I got. What time are we at here, Matt? Well, I was gonna. We got I was six gonna, minutes. Yeah, what do you got? Well, I was gonna ask you a question about your. I, I don't know if you mentioned it in your what, what you were playing, but dreams. Oh yeah! Holy crap! I wanted to. I just want to talk about what the hell that is because I I literally have only seen the Fallout game. I'll show it. you after, um, because it's 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 pretty miraculous. Um, pretty I can't weird I, time to release it too. Yeah, I can't play it worth hell. You can't play it. So I can't like create worlds. It's very. I'm I'm struggling with the controls. Um, there's a lot of items and and things to deal with. It's pretty crazy. I remember. I remember when we watched one of the conferences where the Dreams was shown off years and years ago. They said it was hard to control. And I remember that was my biggest complaint. I was like, you just advertise that this game's hard to control. Like, I'm out of here. Well, I think it was more one of those things where it's like, if you master it, you can become really good at it. Oh, I you know. Um, but my brain is just struggling to work in three dimensions. Because, like, you control with this little floating guy called an imp, Right. They just float around screen. You can control it with your six axis. You can uh, switch it to the sticks if you want. Right. Um, so you can you can control things up and down, left and right, and forward and backwards. But then there's like a whole another aspect of moving it with the six axis. So it's like I'm controlling four different dimensions at once, and it's just it's it's kind of messing with my mind. I can't I can't get a hold of it. But like, what do you what do you do? Like you're it looks like everything's sculpted out of clay, and I know that there's like a sculpting tool. Yeah, apparently one of the Marty was saying one of the tutorials is how to sculpt a face, and so people are creating their own characters and 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 models of of human figures and stuff uh, in this game, um, and they're building worlds. I'll show you a Fallout one that's really cool. So like, my, I think my question more is like, what is this game? Like, do you, is this a Project Spark? What is effectively? It? I, yeah, that's a good that's a good description. I think. Yeah. You can you can literally you can make multiple things with it. You can make simply a scene, right? Which is just like uh, the last one I did was it was it was Ray fighting Darth Vader, and it was just two character models with their lightsabers locked, you know, and the camera like pans around and they got music playing in the background. So right. it was just like a cool scene that they created. Right. It's static, you know, and it's just, it's just an, an experience. Others have made music videos. Uh, there's, there's people have created like actual games. So I was playing like a 2d side scroller, you know, there's racing games you can play. There's first version shooters you can play. And then people have gone even crazy and, and recreated games. And you'll see the fallout one. Once I show you, they recreated fallout. I think, I think sent me like, like a trailer for it. Yeah. In this game. And it, it's nuts. And they're just using all the pieces that are available in the game. What's, what's interesting is, and we were talking about this last night is that, What's the what's the licensing situation like? Is this going to get out of control and somebody like Bethesda is going to be like, whoa, 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 you can't remake Fallout in a fucking other game? Who knows? Now they Marty said they described it as like YouTube for experiences or something like that. So you can make your own Fallout game video on YouTube, right? So why not in Dreams? You know, you're you're, you're definitely not getting the same Fallout experience here. Of course not, but like music and stuff. There's the music a is interesting. We don't even know how they get it into the game in the first place. I want to know how these how these people are this good at making stuff already. Well, the, 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 there was a beta that would, was available for months. Okay. And there was people making stuff, and they got put online, and they dreams started shutting it down. Oh, because you weren't like you weren't you weren't the... allowed to like share that stuff yet. Oh, okay. Um, so people had access to this game for a long time now. But yeah, the skill that must have gone into making some of these scenes is is incredible. I I can't even think of I, I don't I don't know if I ever played Project Spark. I was kind of excited for it, but I I've, um, one of the things that I struggle with, and and I don't know whether there's an objective to this game. Is there an objective to this game? Dream. See, what's interesting to me is I feel like I need an objective or something, or like something flushed out, and and. Like the idea of having unlimited levels, the follow or the Far Cry map creator, mission creator, whatever mm -hmm. is is a good idea. Like it's I I like taking out outposts and stuff, and so I'm surprised I didn't do that more. But I would see that I'd I would see me getting into the same rut in dreams where I would be like, wow, this is cool. Mm -hmm. I'll go watch this on YouTube later. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not a very creative person when it comes to things like this, right? Yeah, and so it's like I don't know what to build. I don't know what kind of world I want to make. I don't. I don't know. So if if even if I mastered the controls and the and the tools, 
I wouldn't know what to make. In in freaking <laughs> in Minecraft, I made a bunch of huts that were just like six by six squares, you know, and I would just put a little little sign on the door saying "Old Man Johnson's Hut." That was that was <laughs> that was all I was doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'll, I'll probably be the same in dreams, but there are tons of things to simply explore that other people made that I can enjoy. And hopefully they'll get better and better over time. A lot of these are like version 1.0 and they're planning on making additions and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. So like they're they're patching their dreams yeah. essentially. Yeah. This is like this is this is nuts. It's nuts, yeah. I want to know the longevity of something like this. So That is hard to say, yeah. The longevity uh and also uh Marty was telling me that he could see it seamlessly going to next gen. But my question is, is the interest going to go into next gen? And with that being said, with the next gen console, is there going to be like a Dreams you know, PS5 version, <coughs> which can do more stuff? Yeah. And I, I can definitely see licensing coming into effect where Star Wars wants to put out a Dreams pack. You can download a bunch of items from, from the Star Wars franchise to build your own Star Wars worlds. But you can actually make your own lightsabers. Like you, you, can, were saying. you can, but, but for people like me <laughs> who aren't skilled. Are there pre-built things? Uh, there's there's pre-built items, but there's also you can make your own items that you can then upload for others to use. So like I downloaded like a Ray character that I could use in my own world. See, this is gonna get interesting if 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 that happens where Star where Star Wars makes their own visual pack. I wonder if they're they're gonna be contingent on any any lightsabers. Delete them off the store. No more sharing of lightsabers. If they sculpt it out of their own clay or whatever you're using in the game, fine. But we're not allowing a distribution of lightsabers unless you pay the eight dollars or whatever. That's a good question. I don't know. And to be blunt, I would I would ask for that if I was in charge of that. Because I'm not going to allow someone to give away my lightsabers or similar products. Well, you can't give it away. I'm going to upload it and you can download it. Or I could force you to buy it. I mean, it just makes more sense for you to buy it. No, no. I think if you want to, if you want to use it in your own creation, you're going to have to pay for it to download it. But if, if you then upload that to the, the, the cloud where everyone else can play it, they can experience it. But they can't use that lightsaber in their own creation. If they want to use that lightsaber in their own creation, they have to buy the pack as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, someone can make some of their own lightsaber no, no, and that's, upload it and then use that as the creation. That's what I'm, but they're not using the officially licensed lightsaber. That's the issue, though, is there should no, there should no be no alternative. Well, like, like, I would, I would Disney not. Would, Disney, I would estimate, would ask for that. Probably, but I don't want that to happen then. Like, peop- people made a pit boy for this Fallout thing that you're talking about. If Bethesda releases the official pack, they'll be like, no, 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 no pit boys, our pit boy. So, well, that, that's going against the whole concept of this game then. So, maybe so I'm they... actually curious as to whether there will never be DLC. That's, then that's possible, yeah. Because Sony doesn't seem to be doing that, eh? God of War didn't have any, not even, not even any microtransactions. Yeah, Spider Man had uh, DLC. Spider Man had DLC, but very traditional DLC, where you're yeah. essentially buying an expansion. Pack. They don't. They, yeah, they don't really do the microtransaction thing. Like you could buy skins in the game, but with, with like Spidey coins. Uncharted or whatever. had like a bunch of weapons you could buy for online. Stuff like that. Although, like the newest one, Uncharted Four, yeah. That is kind of like the last of old era Sony, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. But none of the, none of their latest games had like uh, had microtransactions. Horizon Zero Dawn had like one DLC like story mission. Days Gone? Did that have any DLC? I think it has a it had like a free thing. Well it had a lot of free content, yeah. And yeah, they gave like new game plus and stuff out. But yeah, I don't think there's any anything you can buy in that game. Hmm. I think that's new era Sony that are just being like, well Yeah, but this is made by Media Molecule who had uh Little Big Planet, which had again the licensed kind of things. I was running around as Snake as as my sack boy. Damn it! You know it was awesome. So that's a game I lost interest in very, very quickly. Like I beat the first one, I loved it, but then it was just like, okay, I don't need another well, one. Well, one, one and two was great. Three wasn't made by Meaty Molecule, and so it didn't. I did like the sock guy though. <laughs> it didn't catch on as much. But anyway, that's all we got, Matt. All we got, other than your Surviving Mars game. Christ. Yeah. So if you're you're <laughs> watching our stream, which you should. It was hell. Or if we're uploading the VODs to YouTube, you should tune into that when you, when we get it up there because, holy crap, was that... Uh, Hell. Goddamn drones. We can't figure out how to build out of the area. And then people online are like suggesting like four or five different ways to logistically move stuff. Like, who? 
I feel like this is a part of it where where like you could be doing it for like months, like you could play the game for months, <laughs> and then you just find this like totally new way to do it. I might I might buy it and, and try that uh, tutorial because Christ, I don't you know. Probably what's have going it. On. Hmm? It was it was free on Epic. You probably have it. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, I bought Surviving the Aftermath, but I re- we like everyone or whatever got mm. the free Surviving Mars. Yeah, so we're on Twitch at twitch.tv slash media. So yeah, if you want to catch the horribleness that is my playing through Surviving Mars, you can check it out there. Or catch uh, mm. catch the plague in Matopia and oh, Surviving yeah. the Aftermath. <laughs> yeah. That was fucking horrible. Yeah. If those ones aren't still in the VOD, uh, those are on the YouTube as well. So there you go. We'll see you guys next time. Peace!